What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty cool little mini PC. Now this is a bit different from the Windows PCs that we usually take a look at, but this is still powered by Ryzen APU. Only difference really here is this is running Linux right out of the box. This is known as the Menace Forum UM700 Manjaro Edition. So we do get Manjaro Linux installed right on the internal M.2 SSD. And inside of the box, you're obviously going to get the mini PC itself, a 65 watt wall charger, HDMI cable, display port cable. We get some hardware to mount a 2.5 inch drive inside of here, plus our SATA adapter and a VESA mount. Taking a look at the I.O. up front here, we get USB Type-C, USB 3.0, which is the yellow one. We also got a USB 3.1 Gen 2 port and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. On each side, we don't have much going on over here on the right hand side, but on the left, this is basically all of our ventilation for the built in cooler and moving around back. We've got two more USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, full-size HDMI, full-size display port, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet and our power in. When it comes to upgradability on these mini PCs, mainly the only thing we can usually change or add is some extra storage. And with this here, we can add a 2.5 inch drive to the top lid piece here. We can also access the RAM, which is SODEM RAM running at 2400 megahertz. This one came pre-installed with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD. But they'll also be selling this as a bare bones kit. And with that, you will have to add your own RAM and storage, but it will come pre-installed with AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.2. Taking a look at the specs, the UM700 is powered by the AMD Ryzen 7 3750H. We've got four cores, eight threads, a base clock of 2.3 gigahertz, and a boost up to 4.0. Out of the box, this is running at 25 watts, and for everyday desktop use, that's totally fine. But changing this from 25 watts to 35 watts is very easy to do inside of the BIOS. The built-in cooler will handle that 35 watt threshold, and it does up the performance by quite a bit. For the GPU, we've got that Radeon Vega 10 up to 1400 megahertz. It will accept up to 64 gigabytes of RAM, dual slot SODIMM up to 2400 megahertz, a single M.2 SSD up to two terabytes. You can also add that 2.5 inch SATA drive, be it mechanical or SSD. It also comes with AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.2, and this is running Manjaro Linux out of the box. We're working with the Linux version of the UM700 in this video. Setup was super easy. When it comes to Manjaro, it's a very user-friendly Linux distro. Uh, if you've ever used Windows or basically any other desktop operating system, you can navigate this without any issues whatsoever. I've been messing around with it for the last couple days, and if you wanted to use this as your everyday desktop for web browsing, email checking, you can do some photo editing using something like GIMP. And you know, if you wanted to throw some light video editing, I'd say 1080p, no more than three streams at this thing. The Ryzen 3750H does have more than enough power for your everyday desktop needs. Now, one thing that I wanted to check out was a little bit of 4K video playback. We're going to test out some Steam games using Proton and some emulation. Like I mentioned, Manjaro is a very user-friendly Linux distro, and you know, you don't even have to hit up Terminal, otherwise known as Console with Manjaro, to get applications installed or do any kind of updates. From the Update Center, there's thousands of applications that you can install. We'll just go with Blender real quick. First time you do an application install, it'll prompt you for your password. It's also going to grab all the dependencies you need. You'll just have to click through OK and then it's going to get it installed for us. There's a lot of stuff here. We can go through the games. You can download emulators. You can download Steam. They've done a really great job of making this easy for a first time Linux user, and it's just as powerful as basically any other Linux distro. Uh, there's a couple different flavors. Right now we have the Plasma Desktop, which is something I personally like. It's fully customizable. It does come with Firefox as your default browser, but like I showed you from the App Center, you can download Chrome if you need to. It's really easy to do. We're going to head over to YouTube. I'm going to find a 4K 60 video, and I'm pretty sure we won't have any issues with 4K video playback, even with this APU only sitting at 25 watts. And once we're finished with that, I'm going to move over to the BIOS and I'm going to show you how to up the performance on this. All right, so here we are. We've got a 4K 60 FPS video. I do have the viewpoint set to 1080p. That's what my resolution is set at with this monitor right now, but we are set to 4K if you take a look at stats for nerds. And yeah, I mean, the 3750H, even at about 10 watts, can handle 4K really well. But like I said, this is set at 25 watts out of the box. The CPU cooler here, through all of my testing with the Windows version of the UM700 and the Linux version, can definitely handle 35 watts. 
and it's really easy to get up there. This will unlock a lot of GPU performance, given that we can actually run that GPU at its maximum clock. So if you're interested in doing this, once you boot the system up, press delete on your keyboard. This is going to bring us right into the BIOS. And once we're in the BIOS, we're going to go to Advanced. At the very bottom here, you'll see AMD CBS, NBIO Common Options, and from here, our system configuration. Out of the box, it's set at number three here, 25 watts, but we have a 35 watt, 45 watt, 55 watt setting. Now, I've tested with 45 watt and 55, and it does thermal throttle quite quickly with this little tiny cooler on it, but 35 watts seems to be the sweet spot for this little system. You can always come back to the BIOS and swap it back, but I'm gonna set this to 35 watts, and we'll take a look at some gaming performance at 25 and 35, just to give you an idea of the performance difference. So we're gonna press escape, make sure we save changes, and once that's done, you'll be running at 35 watts. All right, so jumping right into some PC gaming using Steam and Proton, we have the new God of War port, 720p, low settings, and we're at 25 watts right now. Unfortunately, this is pretty much unplayable. I was hoping I could get at least a steady 30, but it does drop below 20. But as soon as we up the TDP on the CPU to 35 watts, it does unlock a lot of performance. Here we are, same exact game, same settings, so we're 720p, low settings, but we're at that 35 watt TDP on the APU. And now we have enough power going to the CPU to deliver the higher clocks on the CPU and GPU side of things. When this is set at 25 watts and you stress out the GPU and CPU, it tries to split up the difference between them, and both of them will be way under clock. So turning this up a bit definitely helps out, especially when it comes to gaming. And yeah, I mean, you could play God of War at 30 FPS on this machine, 720p, low settings. Up there. The next one I tested was Elden Ring. Unfortunately, with the anti-cheat they use, I can't get any kind of overlays to come up. Uh, it's very unfortunate because we can't tell what FPS this is running at. But at 25 watts, it does look like we're in the 20s right now. And after taking it up to 35, it does seem a lot smoother, but I really wish that we could get an overlay going on. I'd say we're still under that 30 threshold with this system here, even at 35 watts with this game. This is just a hard one to run on an iGPU. But now it's time to move over to some emulation. Here we have PS2 using PC SX2. This is set at 25 watts. You really shouldn't have any issues with PS2 emulation. I'm using the Vulcan back end. We're at 1080p with Bloody Roar 4. And as you can see, it's running great. PS2 on this little chip here does work out really well, even in Linux. Next up, we've got some GameCube using the Dolphin emulator, 1080p, Vulcan backend, FPS is up in the top right hand corner. We're getting a real nice smooth 60 with one of the games I always like to test, which is Auto Modalista. Going into this, I really didn't think we'd have any issues with GameCube or even PS2. When it comes to the lower end stuff like PSP, Dreamcast, and even lower than that, this little system will run it just fine in Linux. And surprisingly enough, PS3 is also playable with some games. Now it's not going to run every single game. Here we have Tekken 6, which is an easier one to emulate. But in my opinion, this is running just fine. We're at 720p using that Vulcan back end. It is really hitting up that CPU. We've only got four cores and eight threads. And with this emulator, there are harder to emulate games that love extra cores, like Skate 3. Unfortunately, even at 35 watts, you're going to be hard pressed to even run this at 30 FPS on this system. I was really hoping locking it at 30 would give us a really nice steady frame rate. But unfortunately, even at 35 watts, we just don't have enough power to push the PS3 emulator. This is RPCS3 using the Vulcan back in. I tested OpenGL just to see what would happen, and it was way worse. So Vulcan is the way to go on these Radeon APUs. Overall, it's a very snappy little Linux PC, and I'm really glad to see that they're offering some of these with Linux pre-installed. Now, basically, with all of these x86 mini PCs, we can install Linux ourselves to an external drive or the internal drive, but some people might be looking for a little mini PC with it installed right out of the box, and I say Manjaro is a great way to start. This is a great operating system if you're getting into it or if you've been into Linux for a long time. 
very powerful, but they've made it very user friendly so it's easy to get into. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the Elite Mini UM700, I will leave a few links in the description. And, uh, you know, if you want to see anything else running on this, let me know in the comments below. If you like these mini PC videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you know when I post my next video. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.